Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Cavitation Occurrence on New and Old Engines or After Repair. I'm Amanda Goyette. I'm an admin assistant with AERA. Um, I will be moderating today's event with my colleague, Rob Monroe. Hey, everyone. Yeah, Rob Monroe here from AERA. I look after membership and technical development over here at AERA, and I want to welcome you to today's webinar on Cavitation. Uh, we've got Reiner with us today, and we'll bring him on in just a couple minutes. We've got a couple housekeeping slides that I'll go through, and then uh, we'll bring on Reiner. So for any of the AERA members that are on today, uh, just a little reminder that we do now have our private Facebook group page up, and uh, you have to be a member to be on our private Facebook group page. But if you just go out to the page or to Facebook and just search AERA uh, Engine Builders, that'll come up for you. Uh, there'll be a couple questions there to uh, to go through just so we can verify to make sure you're a member and, and you can start taking advantage of that Facebook page. So from time to time, staff goes on there. Uh, we give help technically to uh, to answer some questions you've got. It's a great place to maybe if you've got a piece of equipment that you're trying to sell or something that, uh, you know, maybe a technical question or something member, you know, member to member that you're looking for for some help on or you're looking for a part, that group page is a great place to do that. So take advantage of that. And also, we went live over the holidays on our LinkedIn page. So now you can access some of our technical information, uh, check out some of the events and, and regionals and that kind of stuff that we're going to. And you can do that over on LinkedIn. So now, Reiner looks after technical services and training for KSTRW products at MS Motor Service International. And it's always a treat to get him. He's a super busy guy. Uh, Reiner comes to us. He's actually in, in his office in Germany today. So um, this is kind of the nice thing about technology. We can be kind of scattered all over the world and uh, and still bring you the technical information and, and training that uh, that's required. So uh, Reiner's going to talk about cavitation. And like I mentioned, any questions, just put those in the questions box and we'll get them answered. So Reiner, how are things today? How are you doing? Well, well yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. And I'm happy to have a place to present something and Yes, we will see uh, what what uh, the people can pick up of this. First, uh, I will uh, introduce myself a little bit, and then we can start very quick uh, about of this uh, presentation of the cavitation of cylinder liner. My name is Rainer Holwein, and I am a technical trainer here by MS Motor Service International in the KS Group. I'm 57 years old, and I'm married, I have a house, but a dog, no ship and other things, but this is not important. Important is uh, I uh, study first uh, car mechanical, then agriculture mechanical, then I was a trainer by New Holland, and then I was trainer by um, uh, Hyundai, and also I spent some time, some seven years ago, uh, seven, seven years roundabout, by uh, a department of uh, testing, uh, car testing in Stuttgart. I will not say the name, but I think you know it. And then I started uh, the business here by uh, MSI for technical training, for reconditioning especially. And uh, now I'm 17 years uh, in the company. And I travel around in the world and every place is, uh, they need uh, some information about technical details. And this is my job. And this is why I also work together with Europe and Amanda with IARA uh, and present some of the topic what we have in our range. Now I want to start. Huh? And when you have some question, please write it in the chat and uh, then after the presentation, Rob will uh, pick up the question and uh, give it to me and then I can answer it. First, uh, you see a picture of a cavitation a cylinder liner. In the first time, uh, the customer or your customer think this will be rust, but this is not rust, this is a cavitation problem. And this is also what I will uh, take it to you, um, that you have some informations after this presentation that you can discuss with your customer when they have such a problem on an engine. First, uh, looks very 
typical to a rust problem, but this is not a rust problem. This is a cavitation problem, but we cannot have only a cavitation problem in an engine on the wet cylinder liner or in the engine block. You can also find some of cavitation problems on the conrod side and the bearing side and the crankshaft side. And every place is there you have liquid uh, material, oil, water or other things. Here again, some of the pockets what you see, yeah, and also these holes what you see outside in the surface of the wet cylinder liner, they are contact with the water chamber or directly with the water. This is only not outside, this goes inside and they co can go inside in the liner and take a hold completely down to the surface inside in the liner and then water can be jumped in in the in the combustion area and can uh, destroy the engine completely. This is also a big picture you see it and you see the material is broke out breaking out in the surface very deep yeah? and different problems uh, they can be take this cavitation problem in the engine. This is what I will show you in the presentation. Here is a small overview what also or where you can also find cavitation problems. Not only in the engine you can have cavitation problems, you have cavitation problems and pipes and um, maybe cavitation and metal hard flaps uh, and other parts on ships. Yeah? And the propeller and water pumps on the bearings. Here you see the small bubbles in the right picture. Uh, there are air bubbles in the blood inside in the metal hard flaps. Uh, is be not be very possible, uh, but this can be go up when something is in the system wrong. I hope nobody have uh, this problem in the in the body self. Here you see it, the ship propeller because of the high speed of the ship propeller and the water around the propeller. And then you see they are built up air bubbles and this air bubble, this are produced these cavitation problems. This is why um, a ship propeller must be designed very exactly how, is, how high is the speed how it's the angle of the propeller yeah? and uh, then they will not build up this, uh, I will say bubbles yeah? uh, in this uh, situation and then the cavitation will be less. This is the engineering uh, topic. Here you see the cavitation can be so hard that the propeller can be completely destroyed. And this is also for big or smaller ships, the propeller must be take out sometimes and must be welding on and uh, repairing uh, because of this uh, cavitation problem. Also back to the engine, you can find cavitation problems and uh, the pump and the water pump housing. And when you take a water pump out and you see some of this, then please check some parts on the engine. What you can maybe repair better, that the cavitation will be less in the future. Some of the problems, it's coming from maybe a mistake in the repairing area. Some of the problems of the cavitation comes from the construction of the of the engine itself or comes also maybe when the user of the truck driver passenger car driver uh, makes some um, something wrong yeah, in the service situation but i will tell you more in the next slides here also they can be break out completely the water pump impeller or in some cases on the engine bearings you can find cavitation. And on the engine bearing side, a cavitation can be built up when maybe the driver, they don't use the right um, oil viscosity, the oil, uh, they maybe they don't use the right oil, but the 
company say yeah, what they must use it and the viscosity it's in the wrong situation and then they can build up maybe a cavitation problem when you see some of the bearings with this such of of cavitation problem then you must ask also the customer which kind of oil they use it this was a small overview how can you see some of cavitation problems in the next slides i will show you what is a cavitation and i will describe it and then maybe also you can adapt it and you can find out yes now i understand it a cavitation builds up in this liquid material in water or oil and we will concentrate it more on the water side uh, in the in the engine and in some cases they can build up bubbles and this bubble it's a air inside outside blue area what you see in the in the picture the there is the water in in the situation the water pressure drops down this bubble and then the bubble the air bubble in collected and then the speed and the pressure from the water jumped in the middle of the air bubble to the surface what they take it maybe the surface from the cylinder liner the engine block i don't know in which place is it the speed and the pressure from this water yeah, fluid blessing yeah, I blasting, I will say, it's very high and have also a very high pressure. I don't know, maybe you know it, how high is the pressure, how high is the speed? The pressure, it's round about 10,000 bar and the speed, it's more than 400 kilometer per, per hour. That means when the, the fluid the water jumped inside yeah in this bubble and put pull, pull down or come on the surface on they will break out definitely all material what they find it you cannot have such material to save this situ situation that we don't uh, destroy it, yeah, the surface on this position we must look what we can do it or what you can do it in the design, in the repairing, that we don't build up this kind of bubbles, that we don't have this micro chat situation. I think some of you in the reconditioner area, you have a machine inside to clean something, to clean parts, engine blocks, bearing, piston, I don't know. Yeah? And this machine, maybe you know it. This is the ultrasonic bath. The ultrasonic bath is a machine. They produce yeah, these bubbles and they also produce this high speed yeah, when the, the micro jet in collapsed and clean the parts. And this is a positive point yeah, of this, I will say, cavitation situation, a cleaning cavitation. But be careful. When you take your glasses inside and you take it on Friday inside, you take it out, please, after maybe one or two minutes. When you stay the glasses, maybe to clean it for the whole weekend, on Monday you will not find your glasses again because then they will be destroyed completely. Then you have too much cavitation, not for the cleaning situation. But this is a positive side for the cavitation, what we want or what what we created when you have some questions write it down in the chat and rob will pick it up formation of a cavitation that means yeah, different parameters it's important in an engine that we don't build up these air bubbles inside first yeah, the pressure inside in the fluid must be right when the pressure in the fluid, in the water situation, in the water cooling system, it's in the right performance, then we will produce not so much bubbles. I will describe it later exactly why. Also, the temperature of the fluid, it's very important. Normally, 
when the temperature over 100 degrees, then we build up normally standard the bubbles. And this is why we look in the engine that we can produce uh, this bubble uh, less because we have a different temperature in the engine. I will also describe it later in some slides. Also the boiling point of the fluid. The boiling point is this point when the bubble build up in the water chamber. And we must look how we can bring the boiling point in a higher position. The boiling point, what I said before, it's 100 degrees, then we build up the bubbles. When we bring the boiling temperature higher, then we don't build up this, this uh, such of bubbles, and then we don't have these cavitation problems. Streaming condition of the fluid. Also, how it's the fluid streaming inside in the engine. Maybe there is also an engine, they have an accident or this, this, this car have an accident and maybe um, a water uh, pipe was be damaged and it was a little bit smaller in the diameter, then the fluid can be not so go quick around huh? and then also they can build up this kind of bubbles. And the last one, it's the fibration. How much, or when you have more fibration, then you will build up this, this kind of bubbles. You remember this, uh, this, uh, this cleaning bath, what I said before, huh? they build up these bubbles because of the fibration of this water bath. And this is also when the engine, it's staying in a very good condition, with the, I will say, uh, they are sitting in the housing of the chassis. Huh? They must be in the right performance. They have less vibration. Formation of cavitation due to constructive cases of the cavitation. Some of engines, they have um, the fluid streaming, the water streaming inside in the engine block may be not in the best con condition and then they build up this kind of bubbles and the cavitation will be there. Some of engine, maybe you know it, yeah? they have more problem with cavitation, other engine constructions, they have less con problem with cavitation problems. And this is a construction problem. Cavitation case by overhauling assembling failures. And this is also very important. When you overhaul the engine, you must be sure that you make your business very well and you don't make maybe a small mistake and then they produce this cavitation problem. Also cavitation due to informally operation condition. Up to uh, the, con I will say, the driver, how they using huh, this such of machine huh, and when they make some mistake, yeah, they can also produce vibrations yeah, because maybe they fill up maybe wrong material inside uh, and so on. And this can be also produce this cavitation problem. On the next slide, I show you what is the boiling point and the pressure. The boiling point is normally on a water by 100 degrees, 100 grad Celsius. When you go on the Mount Everest, you will have the boiling point by 70 grad Celsius. That means when the pressure is less, the boiling temperature drops down. What we do, we must look that the boiling temperature must be increased, that we don't produce the situation of bubbles and the cavitation problem. And this is why we have in the cooler system, on the cooler cap, a valve inside. And we have an overpressure in our cooling system. And this is round about one and one and a half bar. And because of this, this uh, pressure in the cooling area, then we have a boiling temperature they climbed up to 120 degrees. And then we produce not so much bubbles in these places uh, that the water, it's 
less than 120 degrees. On this slide, you see also up to the boiling points of the water because of the glycol mixed, the antifreeze. You know it, the antifreeze, sometimes you must change it. The lifetime, it's different from up to the, uh, the company they produce this engine. They say maybe after three years, after 10,000 miles, uh, or I don't know. But also the concentration of the glycol, of the antifreeze, it's important how good it's the heat transfer. What I mean with this? This, the, the, I mean when the temperature comes from the piston, from the combustion side to the to the liner, to the water chamber, then the water take up this temperature and bring it to the cooler in the front of the car. And up to the glycol, the antifreeze mixed, can be the temperature quicker to the cooler or less. And this is why we have a mixture of the antifreeze of the glycol content round about uh, of 50 to 60 percent and no more. When you take more glycine inside, maybe when you live in a very cold area and you think, yes, I put more antifreeze inside because of the minus temperature in the winter time, this will be not good because the temperature to bring it up to the cooler will be less and then the water inside in the engine will be higher, the water temperature. And then we produce bubbles again. This is why look how it's a concentration of the glycol or the antifreeze inside. And also look how often you must change yeah, the cooler, yeah, the antifreeze, that you save also the completely engine inside a bout of rust. Because also the antifreeze, the glycol have an anti-rust material inside. And this is why you must change the antifreeze and the water in the lifetime of the engine. Some of the new engine, they have, um, I will say, a water filter inside, but this is not a filter. This is a, um, a filter with material inside. Uh, they bring every time small pieces of this um, anti-rust material inside in the cooling material in the water. Uh, this is uh, also a filter they must be changed sometimes in the life of the engine. MIN using, Caterpillar using this kind of filter to save the engine. The next step is the pipe stream cavitation. This is what I said before, when a pipe maybe it's not on the wrong way, maybe the angle it's too strong, because maybe of an accident, maybe they don't use the right or the, the original pipe, then maybe they can build up bubbles because of the speed of the angle, there are the, the water jumped around there. They have some turbulence inside and then we have a vacuum zone inside and then they grow up these bubbles. This is why I said every time, please look that you have the right pipe on it and the right performance and the right position and don't damage maybe some of pipes that are go to the cooler, go to the water pump from the engine block and so on. And this can be also some of construction problems. On the next slide, yeah, I will show you about of the vibration. Here you see a simulation from our engineering department, how it runs down and up the piston in the liner. And you see the piston, it's staying or have contact on the left side. Now he jumps to the right side, goes up. And in this position, when the ignition is coming on the top of the piston, uh, then you have a very high pressure 
they increase around or they goes up to 180 bar to 250 bar. And when the pressure jumped the piston down with this high pressure, then we have also very high pressure on the side. And now you can see it, that when the ignition is coming, and then you see how strong it's a piston jumped on the surface of the liner and the surface have a knocking position. And exactly in this position, we can produce behind of the liner in the water chamber, such of problems, such of high vibration that we produce bubbles on it. This is also important for you that you know it, when the clearance from the piston to the liner is too high, then we have stronger knocking position, stronger vibration, and more, or more bubbles can build up in the water chamber directly on the, on the liner. And then the result is that we have cavitation exactly in this area. This can you also see it uh, in different places on the wet cylinder liner. There you have very high, I would say, vibration situations, and also in this position there we have a very high temperature on it. Questions up to here? Also, write it down in the chat. Here you see also a small simulation. When the piston runs up and down and then jump to the liner, you see how it's a vibration also on the water chamber side behind the liner. And then they build up this kind of bubbles. And when they collapse it, the speed of the water with this high pressure break out parts of the liner. And then we started the cavitation problem. Fibration, yeah, missing the tight seating of the cylinder liner in the counter bore. This can be a problem. When the cylinder liner, the wet cylinder liner, are not sitting perfectly in the housing, in the engine house, yeah, then we have more moving situation, not moving situation in millimeter, we have moving situation in mi micromillimeter. And this can be also build up this problem uh, of this cavitation. Thin wallet cylinder liner. When you have a cylinder liner that is not so thick, then maybe this is also a problem because the cavitation can be higher because when the piston is knocking on the surface of the liner and when the, the thickness is not so much, then you have more vibration in the water chamber. Also piston slanting, yeah the increase lateral guide force of the piston, the clearance, the tightening of the missing of the piston pin offset. Also, when something on the clearance are not correct. Yeah? And the last one, what I said, the clearance in the piston bore. Maybe when you don't have, or when the customer uh, don't have the wrong piston. And you know it better than me. In some engines, you have different kind of pistons up to the to the time when they build up this engine. Yeah? Older one have an older version, the newer one have a newer version inside Euro 3, Euro 4, Euro 5, Euro 6, with particle filter, without particle filter. We have different kind of piston, and also maybe the clearance are different. Please check it before you put it, the piston inside when you uh, install it that uh, you have the right parts. Yeah? And the biggest part is that you look that the cylinder liner is in the bore in the engine block perfectly fitting. Here you see one example. 
In uh, engine, huh, you see it is OM400, OM500, this is the Actros engine, older Syria. And the first, you see the cavitation problems on the top of the engine, very, very on the top, there is the flange seat. And then in the middle position and on the, on the bow, and this situation, on this place, there is the O ring. Exactly in this position, huh, we have fibration situation. And we have also between the space from this red cylinder liner and the engine block, we have a very small clearance between. In this small clearance, uh, there are stay also water inside. And this water will be not circulated with the big uh, water cooled circle. And that means exactly in this situation, we have a higher temperature more than 120 grads Celsius, and then they can build up these bubbles. And exactly in these three areas on the zero, we have cavita they had cavitation problems. Mercedes changed the engine block, and you see on the right side, they see they take a small place out on the wet cylinder liner, on the top of the, of the wet cylinder liner, and that we have more space between the liner and the engine block. That means that we can take out this area of water and take it in the circulation and change it that we don't have an over temperature. Also in the middle position, they change the engine block. They make this, uh, I will say, step smaller that we don't have a big area that uh, water be behind or the between the cylinder liner and the engine block. And also they reduce the step on the on the this area on the engine block on the O-ring position. The newest version is that we uh, Mercedes drill a hole in the engine block on the top of the of the engine block. In this area, very very close to the um, flange seat, that they, the water can circulate it very strong in this position. In this position, at the top of the service uh, of the cylinder liner and the flange seat, we have the highest temperature also because of the um, yeah when the fuel is burned, yeah, is exactly in this area, and this is why the temperature on the top of the liner, it's the highest. And this is why they drill a hole also inside. Be careful which kind of version you have it on the engine, on this example, and which kind of liner you must using. This is not own, this is only an example here from Mercedes, but also other applications from other engines, they change maybe something when they have some problem of cavitation. Here you see it again how big are this cavitation and they started and maybe the driver they don't see any problems but in some place in some case in some times then they have water in the oil and then they ask why I have water in the oil maybe there's a hole directly inside or maybe the o-ring on the bottom side of the picture maybe exactly in this area they have the cavitation and then the sealing of the O-ring is be, not be perfect. And this can be also a problem. Huh? This is a problem about of the construction. But when you or other people, they install a liner, they must look the liner are sitting perfect inside. Yeah. And you have the wrong, or you have the right red cylinder liner. Okay, when we have a new liner, when we put a new piston inside, you must look, we have the right gasket. You have the right over um, um, protrusion or liner protrusion that we bring up the pressure together with the gasket, with the head gasket, together with the, with the cylinder head, together with the screw and with the right torque, we press the liner with the right performance down to the seat on the engine block and sit very well inside. 
when the liner production are less, then we have not so much pressure there. And then maybe the cylinder liner can be moved a little bit, very small moving, and can build up this problem of cavitation. Or we have leakage on the gasket, maybe after a while. This is why every time I say, spend time to check the surface on the flange seat on the engine block. Is it clean? Is it perfect on the angle? And when not, then you must machine it. And also you can describe it to your customer. Yes, I must overhaul not the engine, not for a very small money. No, I must machine the engine because the surface are not in the right performance. I must open the engine completely. I must take the outer engine maybe from the truck. I must machine it. And this is maybe you can describe it to your customer. Yes, you have head cavitation and you will have more cavitation when I only put a new liner inside and I will not overhaul this flange seat. And again, you must look yeah, for the right yeah, liner production that the liner have the right liner production and when it's not in the right performance not in line then you must look that you have find a liner maybe with a higher flange seat but be careful don't take uh, bushing under the flange seat of the wet cylinder liner to adjust the liner producing yeah then you must machine the engine block or the engine itself yeah uh, and that it's not allowed with such of different shims uh, to bring the liner production in the in the right line you know it in some of the wet cylinder liner, we have um, a tombak ring inside. This tombak ring, it's not a, a shim to adjust the liner production. Some of engine construction, they have shims between the liner seat and the engine block uh, with metal. This, yes, you can adjust it with this metal sheets. Uh, there you can also order in different thickness. Then this is a chest gym, but not this very small, not strong yeah, uh, tombak ring. Yeah. This is not a, a chest gym. Also, it's not allowed yeah, to use sealing material on this area, on the top of the engine, or on top of the cylinder liner, on the flange seat or on the bottom side, there are other overing. Don't use any fitting um, sealing material. When you put some of sealing material on maybe a position, they are not uh, in the construction yeah, with this uh, sealing material, then maybe you have bring pressure on the cylinder liner and then also they are fitting not very well and also the situation we build up the bubbles and the cavitation here remind the general advice use the uh, the better quality coolant i will not say you must put this from uh, liquid moly or i don't know from which company or from glycantine you must look what the construction, the engineers say, which is allowed to put it inside. We had different color for aluminum engine. We have different color for gray cast engine blocks. And also some of them, they have only um, a certificate, I will say, to can put this kind or that kind of um, yeah, cooling material and defreeze inside. Use also the right water quality. Also, the mix of the of the antifreeze 50-50, 60-50 is okay. And the current account, the manufacturing space, what I said, keep the cooling uh, uh, circuit tight. Check also filler cap, what I said. When the filler cap are not correct and the pressure 
will be not climbed up to around about one bar, one to one point two bar, huh? then the boiling temperature drops down. And also look that the water pump performance are correct. Look, it's the belt tight enough. It's maybe uh, something wrong on the, the, I will say, the water pump self, yeah? the propeller, maybe the, 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 there are maybe some flaps are break down before. And the most important thing is that the belt tension is correct. Here, against cavitation, huh? the cold engine operation, check thermostat coolant pump. Some of customer in very hot areas, they say, Pooh, I, I know it, uh, it's very hot by us in this area. I take out this um, thermostat because when I take it out, then I have a better performance for cooling the engine. This is incorrect. We need also the right temperature when in the, and the engine it's running. And this is why you must also look that uh, the situation of the thermostat is correct and also the operation always of the certain RPM. That means the second point is when an engine runs, maybe a stationary engine on a power station or maybe a water pump yeah, on the field, they run every time at the same speed. They can be built up exactly in the speed that it's running the engine, build up vibrations. And then they have cavitation. Maybe an engine, the same engine that it's using in a truck application, they have no problem about of cavitation because they drive this engine in different kind of speed situation. But be careful when you have a stationary engine or an engine that runs every time at the same speed. Increase of the, of the pre-pressure, that's what I said, is 1.5, 1.2, it's different, but be careful, check it. And also the water radiator. It's the water radiator clean, it's a temperature change to the air, yeah, or they don't can do it. Some of engines, when I see uh, the water radiator and how they looks, they looks completely locked and they cannot bring the high temperature out to the air, can transfer it yeah, because there is only blocked. And this is also a big problem. And then the temperature increase on the engine goes over this 100 degree uh, grad Celsius, and then we build up again the bubbles and the cavitation starts. This is also not outside to check the water radiator. Also, please check how looks the performance, how looks the, the water radiator inside when they don't change the water, such of the lifetime, and they don't clean it they may be built up rust inside and then the water radiator cannot bring the temperature to the air because there is blocked inside. I have this exactly on my own tractor, uh, this problem of a defect radiator inside. And every time uh, I have overheating in the engine yeah, and uh, the cooling system, the pre-pressure valve open it yeah, because only about of the blocked water radar inside. Be careful and check it. Here you see what we have in our company. We have also some of special cylinder liner. Yeah? There are the water jacket with plasma coating. The plasma coating give a little bit of a harder surface but only in this kind of engines, we make this plasma coating on it, they have problems, general problems with cavitation. You see the first, it's the OM400, what we discussed before, and then I describe it on such of the pictures. And then we make a plasma coating on it. The price is higher, but it's a little bit, I would say you can using 
this kind of liner a little bit longer because the surfaces are harder. And the cavitation will be also the same, maybe because of the problem of the, I will say, construction problems. Be careful when you overhaul the engine, all of this topic, yeah, what I said, look that the cooling system is correct, the water pump, the belt tension, uh, belt tension is correct, the sitting, uh, the wet cylinder liner in the right position, Look that you have the, the liner production in the right uh, situation. Also that you use the right cooling material, antifreeze, and also the water pump, yeah, the clearance between piston and liner. All this you can look that you have less cavitation problems. The last slide from my side is, yes, we have also a lot of information in our homepage. Please have a look inside all of the information, service information, product information, video, how you can install maybe a wet cylinder liner. Can be helpful maybe for new people, they started in the company to uh, in the reconditioned area to build up an engine. And a lot of information you can download all of them are free, or you can also use uh, this motor service app. And in this situation, all you have it on your Android or on the mobile phone, on the iPhone, uh, you have this information directly on the mobile phone. Videos, service information, product information, and other things. Any question to me? For my side, I want to finish huh? and I will say thank you very much. And now I will hand over back to Rob. Thank you, Reiner. Um, great presentation. Um, very, very, uh, it's kind of a topic that uh, a lot of our shops uh, have to deal with, but uh, um, you've provided us with some really good information on how to prevent it and uh, and what to look for. So very, very good job. Thank you. We do have some questions um, that have come in. And one of the questions is, uh, you mentioned about cylinder, like piston clearance on the cylinders. And they're asking, um, you know, maybe with Hyler mileage engines, uh, but can piston clearance actually cause cavitation issues? Yes, can be. When the clearance, exactly when you have an older engine, that's a very long mileage on it. Um, and the clearance will be higher yeah, than the space between the surface of the piston and liner and the, the I will say the moving from the piston in the situation what I show you in this simulation it's a longer way and when you have a longer way the knocking are stronger and then you build up or you can build up more of these bubbles. Okay, all right. Um, another question here, Reiner, is can, have you seen where certain types of like uh, coated cylinders, for example, like the Mercedes that has the, you know, like there's Alusil and Nicosil, Nanuslide, that kind of stuff. Have you seen where those coatings on the aluminum blocks, have, can that help prevent cavitation? Like, do you see more cavitation with that style of cylinder or does that stuff, does that help? Uh, I think they will not helpful of this kind of engines. Because when we speak about of engine, a passenger engine, we have the plasma coating inside, or alucil engine. We have not a wet cylinder liner inside. We have, we have the engine block directly. Uh, this situation is only coming together with the wet cylinder liner, when you have a wet cylinder liner inside. When you have a dry cylinder liner inside, you will not have this, this problem with cavitation. Then you have only cavitation maybe inside in the engine block, but you cannot see it because these are in the water chamber area. But passenger cars have not so much 
I will say, yes, passenger car will have not so much problem with cavitation, not on the liner side, they have cavitation problem maybe on the water pump and other places. The biggest part on the, on the cavitation, it's on the truck application on the wet cylinder liner. Okay, excellent. Um, another question is, can oil pan vacuum cause oil cavitation? Oil well, I think they're pen. referring to, uh, okay. yeah, can, it, can vacuum in the oil pan cause, uh, cause cavitation in the oil? Yes. Sure, definitely. When when the pressure it's in some places, yeah, higher and smaller or vacuum you have it, then the speed the other oil jumped in the pipe, the speed will be different. And when the speed it's different, yeah, then you have built up this cavitation. This is exactly the same situation when you have a pipe. And you have an angle a right 90 degree yes, of an angle and the water jumped in this angle down, then you have, um, I will say, um, turbulence inside. And this can be also when you have a vacuum inside, when the pressure is different in the, in, the, yeah, in, the oil seat, in the oil circle. Okay. Um, another question is, can you prevent cavitation by adding additives to the coolant or to the water? Uh, this is a good question. Huh? We, in our company, we look also for different points that we can reduce the cavitation. And also we look maybe for other surface on the liner and also for additive. I've I look around in, in the internet and other places for specialists but I will not find any other. I didn't find any um, yeah, special top material. They will help uh, that we uh, prevent the cavitation. Some of additives. Okay, so um, so you I, and I think maybe it was in one of your slides you mentioned like is there a is there something you can put in the radiator? To help cavitation, or it, like, is there is there something like a fluid, maybe, or or no? Is you're not that you're aware of? No, this is this is the antifreeze. What 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 must be or go inside? In the um, okay. this one slide there, you see on the top a uh, different uh, yeah um, uh, cap of material. This is the antifreeze and the mixed, and also this is very important to understand. When you have the water cooling system, then you have the antifreeze inside, yeah, glycantine, I will say. And this glycantine have additive inside. They save the engine about of rust and also save the engine inside maybe the rubber material and other things. I will say this is, you can understand or I will describe it when you have a sun cream and you go uh, in the ocean and the sun goes to your body and you have sun cream on it, then you have safe your skin. But you save your skin not when you're lying maybe 10 hours there for a small time. And this is the same what the antifreeze make um, a small skin inside in the engine on all of the parts and save it about of the rust, but not of cavitation only for rust inside. Okay, yeah, good answer. Um, have you seen, Reiner, where cavitation can cause a false noise or knock in the engine and, and maybe set off the knock sensor, you know, maybe like a, a knock sensor um, code or something because of cavitation? <sighs> That you you mean sorry when I don't uh, in uh, in the understand it right but you mean the knock sensor can adapt it when it's the engine have a knocking situation this is right yeah then they change the in, uh, the, the the injection system maybe on the nozzle the time and so on that's right but I will not speak from the the knocking situation from the um, from the combustion side, 
the knocking situation, what I spoke before, is when we have a metal knocked to other metal. Yeah? When you take uh, a hammer and you knock on the hammer on the engine block, yeah? this is the knocking position. What I say, what the, give the vibration in the engine to build up these bubbles. A knocking situation from the combustion side can be also increase a little bit yeah, the situation uh, of the com uh, of the cavitation problem. But when the knock sensor it's uh, find out there is a knocking position, then they change the ignition system, and then they the knock situation will be gone. Okay, when they drive this engine every time with a defect knock sensor and they have very strong knocking every time, then we'll be also build up more bubbles. This is also be careful when you make a end or have an engine and you make a chip tuning, then you go very close to the knock situation of the combustion side. And this is also not positive, it's all negative and you build up more of the cavitation problems. Okay, no, that that's good, Reiner. Um, I think what we're going to do is, uh, uh, you know, just to respect everybody's time and everything. We don't, we know everybody's busy and we've got lots to do today. So, um, any questions uh, that still come in, you know, put those in the questions box. We'll make sure to uh, to get those answered for you and get you looked after. Reiner, we really appreciate your time. We we know it's uh, you know it's dinner time over where you are and. And uh, you've got uh, you got your evening still to uh, ahead of you, and uh, we really do enjoy your webinars. We thank you, and uh, we look forward to uh, to talking to you again and, and seeing more of your information. And uh, thanks again. Also from my side, thank you very much, Rob and Amanda. Yeah. And also thank you very much for listening to me for all the participants. Super. Thanks, Reiner. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to Amanda here just for a minute, and uh, we've got some a few few more slides so you can get a hold of us, and then uh, and then we'll let you go. So back to you, Amanda. All right. Um, as always, you know, thank you for attending today. Um, just a reminder, all of our webinars can be viewed on our YouTube channel. It does sometimes take me a few days to get it up there, um, so make sure you hit that subscribe button when you go out there, and then you'll get notified. When we upload new videos, um, you can find us by just searching Engine Builders Association, and you'll find technical webinars, business webinars, uh, process information, all sorts of stuff out there. And then lastly, when you go to leave today, there will be a survey that pops up. Take a moment and fill that out. Um, let us know if you had any questions that didn't get answered. Let us know how we're doing. If there's anything you'd like to see in the future, you can let us know that as well. Um, and then, as always, if you need to reach anyone on the AERA team, you can reach us at 815-526-7600, or feel free to shoot an email to Rob or myself. You can see our email addresses are there. We will do our best to answer your question, or we can always forward it on to whoever needs it to get you the answer. Um, as always, thanks again for attending. We know you guys are busy and appreciate you taking time out of your day. And we hope you have a great rest of your week.